Hello, Silver. So I heard about this typed thing from some weird guy on the internet. Typed is like a Typed is like a cooler version of LaTeX. It's like a more featureful version of Markdown. It's simple, yet it provides a huge variety of features which allow you to use it in more complex ways. It can be used for laying out books, academic papers, presentations, letters, and card game cards. But at the time, I didn't know about all this. I only knew that it was a thing, and apparently Turing Complete. And since it's Turing Complete, you can write a 3D renderer in it. So, knowing nothing about types, I set off on my journey. After the playground loaded, I discovered that the syntax is very similar to Markdown. I went looking for a way to display colored pixels, because a 3D renderer isn't very useful without the ability to display anything. Seeing this table guide, I thought that maybe I could use a table of colored cells as pixels. But then I changed my mind because I figured the cells would be too large, and I decided I'd use the half block character just like I did in Minecrafty. With a bit more investigation, I figured out how to set the foreground and the background colors of the character. So it seems like you first call a function, and then you wrap the contents in square brackets. Oh, and I guess I'm missing a hashtag too. Okay, so I can go hashtag, highlight, then put the content in the square brackets and then the parameters in the parentheses. Then I learned how to write a loop. In hindsight, the types scripting language is like if Rust and Python had a baby. It took me a while to figure out the syntax for printing content from within the loop. But as before, it seems like you need to wrap content in square brackets. As a little exercise, I wanted to print the squares in alternating colors. But since there was no modulus operator, I had to write one myself. I later learned that there actually is a modulus operator, it's called calc.rem. After this initial investigation, I deemed the project possible, installed typed locally, made a giant array of pixels, and set to work on rasterizing the first triangle. To rasterize a triangle, you must iterate over all relevant points and check if they are in the triangle. To determine if a point is in a triangle, you get the area of the three triangles that make up the triangle, and check if they are all either positive, or all negative. If all of the areas are positive or negative, then the point is within the triangle, and you can color it appropriately. The next step is to add perspective. Whoever came up with the math for this is an absolute wizard and very smart. I haven't taken the time to understand any of the math, but I get the process. First you take a 3D point, then you convert that point to world space using the transform matrix of the mesh. Then you convert the point to camera space by using the inverse transform matrix of the camera. Then you convert the point to screen space by applying the camera's projection matrix. Then you convert the point to normalized device space, which is the magic part. Then you convert the point to pixel coordinates by multiplying by the screen in size, now you have a 2D point in pixel space which you can rasterize as described earlier. But before getting to any of this, I had to write my own linear algebra library in types for doing math on vectors and matrices. I learned after the fact that there's already a library that does this, which is incredibly surprising. So I did that, and I got a perspective projected triangle rendering. In order to verify this was rendering correctly, I reproduced the exact same scene in Blender, and it showed me the same thing. Epic. I discovered that Typest allows you to define an image using RGBA values. So instead of using this annoying half block character, I can just render directly to an image, and it looks so much better now.
As you can see, I have a color for each vertex, and the rasterizer is interpolating these colors over the triangle. I restructured the code so that I could use this technique for interpolating any per vertex attribute, and added a texture coordinate for each vertex. As the attribute is interpolated for each pixel, it can be used as a coordinate to sample an image to use as the color of that pixel, thus making a textured triangle. I had the texture coordinates, but not the image data. I was hoping that this built-in read method would do it for me, but alas, it's only capable of decoding UTF-8. I did a quick search for the simplest image format, which is said to be BMP, and I wrote my own decoder. I used the texture coordinates to sample the decoded data, and the textured triangle was complete. A triangle is fairly boring on its own though, so I started writing the vertex definition for a cube. This is where I ran into another problem. I hadn't defined a depth buffer yet. The color buffer, or the frame buffer, stores the colors of each pixel, and the depth buffer stores the depth of each pixel. The depth buffer allows you to prevent rendering pixels that are meant to be behind other pixels. I finished defining the cube. Well, I partially did it. I couldn't be bothered defining a vertex for each face of the cube, which is why the textures are stretched at the edge. If only there was some sort of modeling software that I could use to make this process easier. Oh wait, there is. So I made a 3D model in Blender, exported it as an OBJ, wrote an OBJ parser in Typest, and then rendered it. And ta-da, here is the result. It is absolutely epic.